Hello and welcome. My name is Michelle. I am your Emotional Resilience Coach. The question to me was posed, what do I do when I have no choice but to live with the narcissist, right? Be with the narcissist. I wake up, they are there. I go to bed, they are there. All day I've got to deal with them. You know, uh, we are just coming out of COVID. There's been lots and lots of lockdowns where there's just been no escape from the narcissist and what can I do? All right, so in these situations, what we have to do is we have no choice but to know and understand our buttons. What a narcissist likes to do is they go for the jugular. They know you, they have watched you, they have analyzed you, they have a really good feel for who you are, what buttons to push, what to say, and how to really hit home, how to hurt. And they are really good at it because there is no place they won't go. There is nothing they won't say. There is nothing they won't do to make sure that they really just get that skewer into you and just twist it and turn it and cause as much pain and agony as they possibly can. And in some cases, like the one I've just described, it is really difficult to step away from. And so my suggestion was, this is a great time for you to really just sit with yourself, get to know yourself, and figure out those wounds, right? Because what a narcissist likes to do is they tend to get a little bit of a glint in their eyes and a little bit of pleasure when they see that they are getting to you and that they're upsetting you. It gives them some sort of satisfaction that they're able to have this control over you and it brings about a little bit of joy for them. And so what you can do is take that away, is figure out what it is that is hurting you. Write it down. Look at what it is that they say. What buttons are they pushing? What is it that you need to work on and heal? And I know that it is really, really difficult to do when this person is around you all the time. At times it feels like it's almost impossible because you feel like you just don't have any time or space to escape. You are surrounded with this narcissist and their wily ways all the time. And so part of the practice while you are working on yourself and while you are figuring out what it is that needs to be healed. And this is going to be a journey. This is not something that you're just going to figure out in a day and the next day it's going to be different. So there's going to be a long while that the narcissist can still get to you, can still poke in those wounds and can still cause you a little bit of pain. And so what you need to do is become as uninteresting as you possibly can with the narcissist so that they lose interest in you right? So that they go and find somebody else to pick on or they amuse themselves with something else. And so what you want to do is just don't raise to the bait, right? Kind of know that they have a pattern and kind of know which areas they're going to go for, how they're going to do it, what they're going to say, which areas of you that they like to really go for and push those buttons and do what they want to do and really get a reaction out of you. And what you want to do is not give them that reaction because that is what they're looking for. That is what they're feeding off And of. you want to try and just kind of practice being bored with it all. Like, really, this is so boring. Are you still going on about that? Are you still harping on this? Haven't you moved on? Like, this is boring. And inside, they might really be getting to you and you might really be hurting and in a lot of pain. But you don't want them to know this or see this. Now... This is tricky because you don't want to shut yourself off entirely or, or get used to shutting yourself off entirely. But to the narcissist, at least, you don't want to feed them or their ego the pain that you are in. So you might afterwards go into your room and have a good cry into your pillow or scream in the shower or punch your pillow or rip at a teddy bear or something like that to get the frustration out. But with the narcissist, you just kind of want to roll your eyes and listen. And to the best of your ability, take no heed. Just take no notice of what they're saying. Just look at them and kind of think to yourself, oh, this is hard to be you. You are obviously in a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, that you feel you need that company, right? Misery likes company. 
They don't like to see you happy or doing well or in a good space. They're going to really try and find ways to pull you apart. So you want to try and just give them as little attention as you possibly can. Don't rise to the bait. When you feel that that emotion is coming up and it's boiling up for you, just excuse yourself. Just say, hey, I've got things to do. Leave the room. Lock them out of your room if you have to. Put earphones on. Drown them out. Find ways that you just don't get that voice that ugliness, that mean-spirited into your head. And be as uninteresting as you possibly can. This is often referred to as gray rocking. And what that means is, you know, you pick up a gray rock, it's pretty boring, you kind of look at it, and people normally go, eh, and they toss it aside, right? It's a gray rock. There's nothing very interesting about it. You want to do the same. You don't want to give them too much information. You don't want to tell them too much about what's going on with you, what you're doing, what you're not doing, what's happening, what isn't happening. You want to try and seem as pretty neutral and as pretty as uninteresting as you possibly can so that they lose interest and that they move on and figure out something else to do. All right. I hope that these questions have helped. Thank you. Please keep them coming. Come on over. Send me a message on the Emotional Resilience Coach on Instagram or leave a comment below. You can DM me if you want it to be private and I would get to it as soon as I can. Take a deep breath. Acknowledge you're doing a great job. You're doing better than you think you are. And go on, have a most empowered day.